How's it going, everyone? Big Sean Power 10 here, finally. Now, I know some of you are probably wondering right now as you're watching this, Sean, where the hell have you been, man? It's been ages since we last saw you. What have you been up to? Well, it's a pretty simple answer, guys. Um, my laptop has been suffering from technical difficulties. And long story short, to uh, sum it all up, no laptop, no videos. Simple as that. Um, so for the past couple weeks, I've had a, I've had the laptop with a buddy of mine, and he's been, you know, fixing it up and cleaning it up and all that stuff. So I just got the computer back today, so uh, looked, uh, things look pretty good on it, and I think we should be good to go. So there's your answer right there. Um, it's, uh, it's actually, it's actually been a struggle just to get inter internet access for this these last couple weeks. I've had to, you know, rely on going to friends' house, houses and. Uh, you know, wireless hotspots and so on and so forth for, you know, for inter internet access. So that's the reason for my absence. Um, you know, unexpected things happen. What can I say? Um, but my original plan was this: before all this erupted, um, I was gonna. I had a couple videos made. One being a, a recap of the Tulsa game. Well, not really a, a recap, but more like a a pissed off rant video. And then uh, our bye week was the next week, so I was going to take that week off, and then I, I had planned to make a preview for the Utah game earlier the next week, but obviously uh, things uh, things changed with uh, the computer going down and all that. I mean, I had the videos ready to go, but just it didn't happen. So, but like I said, I'm, I got the computer back today, it's all fixed up, and we shouldn't have any more problems from here on out. So, let's just get right to it. Uh, for, for, uh, for starters, let's talk, let's talk about the Utah game. Uh, first off, I was very fortunate to have been in attendance for that game. Uh, <laughs> oh, geez, where to begin? You know, I'm still getting that excitement rush, just even talking about this game. Uh, it was a blast to be there, guys. Um, Anyone who was there, you know what I'm talking about. It was just a great game, um, a big, big win. First, our first win over a ranked opponent since Penn State back in 2006. Well, ironically enough, I was there for that game in 2006, and I'm very fortunate to have been been here for this win over 14th ranked Utah. Well, then 14th ranked Utah. Um, as for the game itself, uh, I was. I mean, I, I was overall, overall, I was I was really happy with how we did play. Um, got off to a slow start, but we picked it up, and uh, just the rest speaks for itself. Uh, Tommy Reese, uh, the true freshman quarterback, filling in for Dane Chris. Uh, he did, for the most part, he, he did an okay job. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, you can tell that you know him being an 18-year-old kid, uh, being pr practically thrown to the wolves. You could tell he was a little bit nervous still. I mean, his first ever start coming against the 14th ranked team in the nation. Um, I'd, I'd be nervous too. But you could tell that um, he did, I mean, overall he did play well. I mean, his numbers weren't anything spectacular. I mean, 13 of 20 for 129 yards, but three touchdowns. That's the big, that's the big stat right there. Uh, two touchdown uh, passes uh, to Duval Kamara, one to Michael Floyd. But, I mean, aside from a few mistakes that he made, like burning two timeouts because he didn't have all his crap together, um, you know, that could have came back to hers, but it didn't. But still, that's, it's things like that that he needs to, to work on. You know, get your, get your stuff down. That way you don't have to burn timeouts. Simple as that. But uh, for the most part, he did a good job containing his composure in the rest of the game. And he just, uh, you know, he had, a, had an impressive... An impressive first start. So, um, I see good things coming from this kid. I really do. Um, other than that, um, the running game, I was really happy to see them get going. Uh, now, obviously I didn't have the preview posted, but I said in the preview that the key thing for this game against Utah was going to be establishing a run game. Well, we did that. Um, let's see, I believe Sierra Wood had 70 yards. Jonas Gray had about 40 or 50 yards on the ground. Overall, I think we had about 160 rushing yards in that game. You know, rough estimate. I don't have the stats on me. But did a great job. I mean, even though they didn't score any touchdowns on the ground, a lot of those big runs put us in position to get 
to get some scores, and we and we capitalized off it. So, but the big uh, on the other side of the ball, defensively, an outstanding job shutting down this this uh, fast-paced, uh, heavy throw Utah defense or Utah offense. Excuse me. Um, I one uh, discussed this with uh, uh, my friends that I went went to the game with. I think what ha what uh, happened was Utah. They threw the ball plenty of times, but they really tried to hit us with the run because they figured, you know, hey, every, everyone else has been running all over us. Why don't we do the same? Well, let's just say our run defense came to play that game because we shut them down in practically every aspect, including the pass. We just there's there's they, we just straight up outplayed them. What what else can I say? I mean, that the game that the final score, 28 to three, sums it all up. But what really impressed me the most was uh, us shutting them down inside the red zone. I mean, two times they got in the red zone on us. That's all they got. Two times all day in the red zone. And we hold, we shut them down. We uh, forced the turnover on downs. And I just, I know I'm, I'm kind of rambling right now, but it was just, ah, it was just incredible. You know, the defense did a great job, stepped up, made plays. Um, Special teams as well. Robert Blanton had the, the big punt block and ran it back for the touchdown. Happened right in front of us. And cool. that was the turning point right there in the game. As soon as I saw that happen, I'm like, okay, we are winning this football game. We're going to get it done. Just watch. I told that to my friends. And sure enough, not only did we win, we just, we just whooped those guys. But, oh, man, it just... Uh, I don't really know what else to say about that game, you guys. It was just a great atmosphere, fun time, and unfortunately, I have no video footage of it because, well, for starters, um, the rain. We had a pretty heavy, uh, heavy load of rain in the first half, and well, I wasn't going to risk bringing out the camera and damaging it, and it wouldn't have mattered anyway because I forgot the memory chip to it. So. But I do have some pictures. I'll try to post those in, in another video. Maybe this video. I don't know. Um, but just an uh, impressive win. You know, nice to see us finally beat a, a top 15 opponent for a change. Now, I know what some of you guys are probably thinking. Sean, how can you even be happy with this win? I mean, Utah is overrated. Well, first off, I say screw that. Okay? Because if you want to get technical... I could, you could go down, or myself personally, I could go down the list of every single top 25 team and give at least one reason for each team why they shouldn't be at that ranking. So, there you go. The same, the same thing every year. It doesn't really matter. Whether you feel Utah was deserving of that 14th, uh, that 14th uh, ranking, then that's, uh, that's, your, yeah, that's your decision to believe whatever you want. But, nonetheless, as it stands, we have a victory over the 14th ranked team in the nation. So, that's how it stands. Now, on to tomorrow, tomorrow's game against Army. Neutral site game, Yankee Stadium. <sighs> well, our recent history with the service academies speaks for itself. One win in, in the last, uh, let's see. Yeah, one win in the last three seasons over the service academies. Um, Navy's beaten us three times. Air Force has beaten us once. We were lucky enough to get gotten a win over Navy in 2008. Now, Army runs a very similar offense to Navy. Well, actually, sort of. Army's a, more of a triple option team. Navy, I thought they were triple option, but they are more of a, of a veer offense kind of team. But... Uh, this is the first time um, playing Army since 2006, and back then we beat them 41 to six in that game. That was the uh, famous uh, green jersey game and the famous uh, beat SC chant for those of you ND fans who remember. Um, nonetheless, uh, I don't know too much about this Army team. All I know is they're six and four, and it's uh, <laughs> the first time in a long time we played them where Army actually comes into this game having the better record. But, hey, you know, that's how things fall sometimes. Um, what's going to have to, what's going to be important is we got to, our defense has to step up again and play a consistent game all the way through, shut down that, that uh, Army rush, uh, rushing offense, 
and just don't let anyone get away from us. I mean, that's the mistake we made with, with Navy, is we weren't fully prepared for them, and we, the funny thing is we knew what they were going to throw at us, and we still couldn't do anything about it. So, I mean, basically it just comes down to being prepared. And, you know, the offense, I mean, and, hey, and Tommy Reese, I know, I know he's young, but he's got to have, he's got to step up and make some good throws, make some good decisions, and coaching. Coaching has to make some wise decisions, too. I mean, Tulsa, I know it's, it was a couple weeks ago, but I'm going to say it again. If you have a chance to kick the game-winning field goal, if that's what this game comes down to, you kick the game-winning field goal. I don't care if it is Army, and I don't care if it, if it is a team you're supposed to blow out. It, you kick the field goal. You don't throw the ball when all you need is a field goal. So, basically, basically to win this game, everyone just has to be on their A game. Execute properly, as I've been saying all season long. Execute, communicate, and finish the job. That's all there is to it. And this one's definitely a, bit, a big game for us. We need, we need to win this game to become bowl, el bowl eligible. Because I tell you one thing, if, we, if, we, if this game slips away from us, um, it's going to be, not to overlook this game, but it's going to be uh, really hard to try to become bowl eligible with a win over USC. So I say we take advantage of this game. I'm not saying that Army isn't isn't a good team or anything like that, but compared to USC, they're our safety net. And I'm sure any of you who are watching this can understand where I'm coming from. I'm basically saying that USC is a, is a far better team than Army by by far far by none. You know what I mean? So we just got to take care of business tomorrow night. Simple as that. All I know is. So we have a chance to finish seven and five, and at this point in the season, seven and five for this team is going to be a real strong finish, considering everything that's gone on, all the injuries that we have on this team. You know, but let's get let's get started tomorrow night, and be, let's get bowl eligible. With that, guys, that's all I have to say. Uh, it's great to be back. So this is Big Sean Power Ten. Go Irish, baby! Beat Army.